Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It was a Friday night get together at a home on the city's east side that ended with the shooting. Details coming up next. Plus, firefighters work to put out an intense fire on the city's southwest side. Details on that investigation just ahead. Yeah, taking a live look. Oh my goodness. We're supposed to be taking a live look. Can't see much out there right now. As you can see, if you're looking at your screen, some fog out there to start the weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. Six o'clock this Saturday, October 23rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Obviously, a lot of fog out there right now, but yesterday, picturesque. We had sun. It was beautiful it was yesterday. Nice. You have been just a social media sensation recently. I don't know what you're talking about, Max. Okay, the two <laughs> posts. One went on a gorgeous walk with the dogs. Oh, at Confluence Park. I had mm -hmm. to. I, I love Confluence Park. It's beautiful and it was beautiful. It was a little warm when I went. Mm -hmm. It was like 2 or 3 p.m. on a Wednesday and it was a little warm. Sarah. And then before we get to Sarah, I want to talk about the Monarch Caterpillars. Okay. You're bringing us along with the journey. I love it. Go on. I've gone down the rabbit hole. I put mm -hmm. netting around them. Okay. And yesterday I actually saw a wasp trying to go through the netting Ooh. and I was like, oh, thank God I got the netting on there. Good defense. Yeah. There we go. All right. Sarah Spivey, <laughs> good day to garden out there. Yeah, but it is going to be hot, you know, especially for October standards. Definitely warm outside this afternoon. And we can see that humidity out there in the form of fog. In fact, we take a look outside with one of our live cams, and you can see on the horizon there near the airport, we're starting to see visibility uh, lower in many places. So a bit of spooky fog, especially outside of the city center. Visibility is down to half a mile at Stinson, down to seven in New Braunfels down to a quarter of a mile in Pleasanton and it's warm this morning. Do, the temperatures are right near about 70 degrees just about everywhere. It's 72 in Canyon Lake uh, near 69 in San Antonio 71 at JBSA Randolph. So a not so fall weekend for outdoor activities, but you still be should be able to get outside without much of an interruption there other than the warm conditions near 86 today, 88 tomorrow and throughout the weekend we are going to carry a 10% chance for a stray shower. In fact, on the radar right now around the KSAT 12 viewing area, we actually do have some rain southeast of San Antonio. So coming up, I'll show you the radar. We'll also talk about when we will get a cool down. That'll make it feel a little more like fall coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for the suspect involved in an overnight shooting on the city's east side. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live this morning with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. How did all of this start? Good morning, Sarah. Police are saying this all started as a fight that ultimately led up to a shooting. Information is limited as this only happened several hours ago, but this is what we know so far. San Antonio police responding to this home shortly after 2 o'clock this morning on Astoria Drive near Houston Street and I-10 East at 2.30. Now, they say the people who live at the home had visitors over and one of them pulled out a gun after a fight broke out inside the home. Officers say the suspect shot both a man and a woman in the leg. Both victims were taken to Bamsey and are expected to be okay. Now, Max, our police say the suspect did leave the scene. Of course, this case remains under investigation. We'll update you as more information becomes available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, firefighters working to figure out what exactly caused a home on the southwest side to catch fire. Take a look. This is what we know right now. It happened around 930 last night on Candalia Avenue. That's between Southwest Military and Somerset Road. Firefighters on the scene tell us when they arrived, they found heavy flames coming from the left side of the home. Now, they had a tough time putting out the fire because the home had two separate rooftops. Firefighters did manage to stop it from spreading to other homes in the neighborhood. Luckily, no one was at home at the time of the flames. No injuries reported right now, but investigation into what sparked it all, that is still ongoing. Law enforcement in the Hill Country is buckling down on traffic stops after increasing numbers of suspected human smugglers. The Kimball County in Kimball County alone, officers are seeing more than 30 times the number of human smuggling cases they typically respond to. That work putting a strain on resources and officers over in Kerr County. The sheriff's office is facing a similar problem. Investigators say smugglers are using highways 41, 83, 377, 290 and I-10. And in Kerr County, investigators will soon start patrolling heavy traffic highways to deal with this issue. We're going to work traffic. We're going to be paying more attention to traffic violations. We're going to try to make more contacts with vehicles out on the highway. 
Kerr County is also escalating charges for suspects and seizing vehicles and devices in hopes of deterring other smugglers. Since June, about a dozen people have been charged. Officers are also working with limited overtime and pay without a tax base in Kimball County to hire more officers. Junction police are now looking to the state. Now to the latest in the pandemic, Pfizer says its vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 years old, it's nearly 91% effective against symptomatic illnesses. It comes as the FDA prepares to meet next week to consider authorization and as the CDC endorses booster shots. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. From coast to coast, millions rolling up their sleeves for booster shots, following that green light from the CDC to administer Moderna and Johnson & Johnson's booster. Pharmacies flooded with calls. There's been definitely people calling for it or you know, wanting to schedule or asking if they're officially eligible, you know, based on the criteria. There's also flexibility for people who want to mix vaccines. Federal regulators allowing them to choose a different brand from the one they originally received. And as more people receive boosters, the CDC director hinting there may be a need to update what it means to be fully vaccinated. Right now, we don't have booster eligibility for all people um, currently. So we are going to, we, we have not yet changed the definition of fully vaccinated. Um, we will continue to look at this. We may need to update our definition of fully vaccinated in the future. And with vaccines for younger children expected within weeks, parents are finally getting their first look at how Pfizer shots for kids performed in five to 11 year olds. One, two, three. The company reporting that its trial data of more than 2,200 children showed the vaccine was nearly 91% effective at preventing symptomatic disease. There were no cases of severe illness or that rare side effect of heart inflammation, myocarditis. I find that very reassuring. Uh, it's another step in the right direction for equipping physicians to be able to provide protection to children in, in order to move forward and get us out of this pandemic. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Supreme Court is allowing the restrictive abortion ban in Texas to remain in effect as the legal challenges play out. The issue will eventually be heard by the high court on November 1st. The ban outlaws abortions past six weeks of pregnancy in Texas. When the Supreme Court hears oral arguments, the justices will focus on the unusual construction of the law. Texas officials aren't allowed to enforce it. Instead, private citizens from any state can bring a civil suit against anyone in Texas who helps violate the state law. Santa Fe Fire and EMS on the location of emergency. Uh, Bonanza Creek Ranch has had two people accidentally shot on a movie set by a prop gun. We need help immediately. Now that was the new audio release from a 911 call just after the deadly shooting on a movie set from Thursday this morning. We're also learning more about the investigation into the incident on the set of Alec Baldwin's new movie. A search warrant issued by the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office for the New Mexico set of the movie Rust says the incident happened when an assistant director handed Alec Baldwin one of three prop guns. The assistant director then yelled, quote, cold gun. Cold gun means that the gun was not supposed to have any live rounds inside. Investigators say the assistant director did not know the gun had live rounds. He turned out to be incorrect. Now, the gun fired by Baldwin hit and killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins in the chest. The director also hit in the shoulder. In the meantime, authorities have seized all of the weapons, the cameras, and the computer equipment from the set. We're going to have much more on the story in our next half hour at 6.30. Time now is just about 6.09. 70 degrees out. Well, have you ever made a complaint online but never seen results? Just ahead, a few things to consider before you post. And a special look at a haunted ghost tour right here in San Antonio. Of course, we're talking about the newest episode of Texas Eats. 70 degrees at 609. Sarah Spivey nice. says you're going to be seeing some of that fog. You can see a little bit in that shot there around our viewing area. She'll have more on that when we come back. Go on a tour. You're going to show some of the spots around the building that actually have the most activity, right? I certainly am, but I think before we get started, let's go get a hurricane. My man, let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right. There we go. Thanks. Thanks, Mikey. Thank you, Mike. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so where are we going first? Well, I think we got to start with the uh, piano lounge. That's uh, a lot of fun, and uh, there's been some activity. So. <laughs> oh, no, I like having fun there. I didn't know I had ghosts. <laughs> yeah, let's go see it. All right, let's go check it out. So Dueling Piano Bar, that's what we're known for. Great show. You would think that would be it, but uh, 
Yes, there's been some ghost experiences here. I've come in here before, nobody in here, and the pianos will just start playing. No, no, get yeah. out of here, no, come on. No, I'm not kidding, man. It's, oh, uh, it can terrible. be a little spooky. Yeah. No. What motivates you to keep coming back after something that's like that happens? That's a great question, yeah, that is a great question. <laughs> I'd be man. done after the yeah, first after time. the first time. So this room, you've had uh, some activity, piano playing, lights coming back on, yep. and you could have sworn you turned them off. I know I did, because it was with a key. So you did, <laughs> yeah. So you can't even turn them on with no, a switch. No, no, okay. okay. Yes. Sadly, I was going to say, the hurricane bolt move. It's a bolt move. Be, be careful yeah. with those because no. they're, they're so sweet and yummy. But It's Ooh. funny that we mentioned hurricanes. So my husband made hurricane last night, but he had to half the recipe because he knew <laughs> yeah. I had to get up a little early this morning. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the radar. I promise that there are some showers and storms out there just southeast of San Antonio. And today we will carry a uh, about 10% chance for a stray shower or storm around the metro area, uh, but a little bit higher chance out southeast toward Cuero, Victoria, Hallettsville, and Gonzales today. You can see a storm there working its way to the north uh, near Victoria. And again, in San Antonio, we'll carry a 10% chance today. The biggest thing you'll notice out there this morning, the fog. Look at the visibility slowly reducing around the airport area right now. It's 69 degrees. Those temperatures and dew points right close to each other. That's what creates that fog with the calm wind conditions. It allows pretty much a low cloud to form at the surface, and that's very much what fog is. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile at Stinson. And I think before we see the sunrise here, we're going to see visibility officially uh, lower at these sites near the airport and JBSA Randolph. Visibility at seven miles in New Braunfels, but you can really see uh, further southeast and south of San Antonio. Visibility uh, down to a quarter of a mile in Pleasanton, down to a quarter of a mile in Catula, and a quarter of a mile in Beeville this morning. Very warm and muggy out there this morning. 71 in New Braunfels, 71 in Pleasanton. It's 74 as you're walking out the door in Gonzales, 70 in Del Rio, 65 in Kerrville, and 64 in Rock Springs. Showing you the future cast right now. Uh, again, we can see that southeast of San Antonio, there's going to be a chance for some showers and storms today, especially out toward Houston area. But even around the Alamo City, just a very small 10% chance for a stray shower during the afternoon hours. Uh, we're not going to see widespread rain by any means, and it's going to be a warm day for all of us. Near 86 at the airport in San Antonio for the high, close to 90 in Del Rio, 88 in Eagle Pass, 89 in Carrizo Springs. So today's forecast calls for that patchy fog to start lifting uh, shortly after sunrise. We'll probably still see some in the area, 9, 10 o'clock. Warm and muggy today, already at 80 at noon. It is going to be breezy with south southeast winds at 5 to 15 gusting up to 20 miles per hour and then once again in the afternoon a 10 percent chance for a stray shower sun will set at 655 and it's going to be a mild evening no real chill in the air whatsoever we'll still be in the 70s by 10. now i want to talk about a changing weather pattern headed our way there is a tropical storm across the pacific right now uh, it's called tropical storm rick and it's going to be moving to the north effect parts of western Mexico as potentially a major hurricane, potentially category three hurricane. This is going to sling some moisture our way, but we're really not going to see much in the way of uh, rainfall in the week ahead. Instead, an approaching cold front is going to fall apart across North Texas, and by Monday we'll be challenging record heat. A high temperature on Monday near 90 degrees. The record for the day 91. That cold front is going to tease us to the north, but but another cold front is going to move through Tuesday night into Wednesday. That'll combine with a little bit of moisture from Rick, and it looks like Wednesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning we'll have a chance for showers and storms, but the better chance will be in East Texas. Our chance for rain right now, as it stands, about 30%, so not a totally impressive, but we'll be able to update you as the forecast becomes more clear for the middle of the week. Then by Thursday morning, uh, we'll be feeling all the effects of that cold front. Nice dry weather a cool morning on Thursday morning. And in fact, as we head into Halloween weekend, mm -hmm. our morning <laughs> lows will be chilly and our afternoons will be comfortable. But until then, you know, we've got a mixed bag. Record challenging heat on Monday, a chance for storms Tuesday night into Wednesday, and then nice weather by the weekend. We got a 90 in there and a 49. Love it. Yeah, South Texas, great. <laughs> I'm now 617, 70 degrees out.
Well, grocery bags, clothes, and even your produce can have an impact on climate change. Still ahead, five simple ways you can help the environment. Plus, got a bone to pick with a certain company? You might turn to social media, try and get a resolution. However, experts say, before you put the company on blast with a tweet or a complaint that everyone can see, there is a better approach. We're gonna explain. Muertos is just around the corner, which means that the preparations are in full swing to honor, celebrate, and welcome back your loved one who has passed away. And we want to hear from you. Share with us your must-have items for your ofrendas or altars, and also tell us a little bit about the people that you are honoring this year on Day of the Dead. So we want you to submit those pictures at the link below, and we hope that you'll celebrate this holiday with us. And we'll share those pictures and stories on KSAT News Now on Dia de Muertos or Day of the Dead. Well, it's easy enough to post on a company's social media site venting your anger and frustration, but how do you actually get results for customer service? 12 Intersides' Marilyn Moritz has some tips. If you use social media to lodge complaints, you're not alone. Nearly every company, big and small, is on social media. So if you've got a beef, why not use it to resolve an issue? Consumer Report says it's a good idea, but to get results, use common courtesy and don't Twitter shame right off the bat. Whatever platform you're using, try a direct message instead. Companies know you can put them on blast where everybody can see your message. So they may appreciate it when you don't. That, he says, could get you a faster and more helpful response. And there are other benefits by going the private message route. It can help you avoid scams because no one can see your complaint except the company rep, especially important when dealing with financial services. And before you post or message, make sure you're reaching out to an official company account. On Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, an authentic account should have a check mark in a blue circle. And no matter how frustrated you may be, it's important to be nice and not threaten the company in your DM. Remember, there's a person on the other side of that message. A person you want on your side. And manage your expectations when it comes to a response. Don't expect something immediately. Give them at least a day or two. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I'm trying to figure out what was behind her. I don't know, but I mean, let's all just be nice. Yeah, just be nice. There you go. Yeah. 623, 70 degrees out. We're still ahead on GMSA, celebrating loved ones through vibrant colors and traditions. Details on Huertos Fest here in San Antonio. Well, Dia de los Muertos is just around the corner, and what better way to celebrate than at one of the biggest festivals in the U.S.? That's right. The best part is it's this weekend right here in San Antonio. Muertos Fest named one of the best fall festivals across the country by National Geographic back in 2019. Between today and tomorrow, more than, get this, 100,000 people expected to attend. Happening from noon to 9 p.m. today. Hemisphere, for more information, just look for the article right now, ksat.com. Are you going? Uh, I don't know. Uh, think about it. Go. Cool. Time now, 627, 69 degrees now. We're still ahead in our next half hour, celebrating life with your loved ones. A few ways you can get your family involved, making a Day of the Dead ofrenda. Plus, a Defenders update where the trial of Michelle Barrientes Vela now stands and who is fighting to stay on the case. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning, October 23rd. It's felt like October. We yeah. got some sun yesterday, but this morning, a lot of fog out there. A lot of fog out there, Sarah. Is it going to clear anytime soon? Well, yeah, it'll clear with the sunrise, but the fog this morning is about the only October-ish looking thing we're going to experience all weekend long. It is going to be a warm and muggy weekend around San Antonio and South Central Texas. Look at that fog out there right now, starting to thicken up around the airport area. Visibility down to about half a mile at Stinson, down to five at JBSA Randolph. Visibility even lower, about quarter of a mile in Pleasanton. Once the visibility drops below a mile, that's where you have to use a little extra caution. Once it drops below a quarter of a mile, that's when it's really difficult to see outside. But even though it's not going to feel like fall, you still may want to do some fall like activities. So here's your corn maze forecast for South Central Texas. Oh, where are we going to go? Oh, okay. 
here we are. It's <laughs> temperature. Sarah's laughing at me. She thinks I'm such a nerd. Okay, well today we'll be looking at a high temperature in the mid 80s and tomorrow in the upper 80s. So again, warm and humid all weekend long uh, with a 10% chance for a stray shower here or there. I'm still gonna call it amazing weather outside just because of the pun itself. But we'll talk about when it'll actually feel like fall shortly coming up in the forecast in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're now getting information this morning that a man tased on the city's west side overnight. San Antonio police saying it happened late last night into this morning. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live with more details. Good morning, Jonathan. What exactly led up to this incident? Good morning, Sarah. Well, they're saying that that man was harassing a group of people at a church. Information is limited, but listen to this. They say that man was driving on Southwest 19th Street and Saltillo Road. That's near Benavides Park on the city's west side shortly after 11 p.m. last night. Police tell us the car had no tail lights. The license plates didn't match the vehicle description. And how about this? The driver did not attempt to take off. They say he was driving at about 20 miles per hour before he got out of the car and walked through a gate of a home. Police say they asked the man to come out when they made efforts to detain him. It was a sudden move on his part that prompted police to tase him. Now, Max, Sarah, the suspect was taken into custody for questioning. They say charges are pending, but of course, information is limited and this case remains under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now for a look at what's been happening at the courthouse. Newly uncovered evidence could push back the murder trial of Andre McDonald, the Air Force major accused in his wife's death. Prosecutors say a disc containing about 100,000 items related to the case is now being reviewed. Investigators say it was only recently found after a previous detective on the case retired and the new detective came across the disc. Prosecutors only have two weeks to review the new evidence before the information needs to be handed over to McDonald's legal team. It's unclear if prosecutors will meet that deadline or if the trial date will be delayed again. The latest date was set for November 8th. On, on November 5th, a hearing is scheduled for an update. Staying with the courts, the trial of a man facing a first degree murder charge in his wife's death set to begin on Monday. The Benevento jury selection in this murder trial wrapping up this past week. He is accused of killing his wife, 62 year old Alicia Wills, during an argument back in 2019. She was shot multiple times at a home on Lucky Path in West Bear County. She later died at the hospital. Deputies at the time said the couple was arguing and at some point Benevento shot Wills. If found guilty, Benevento faces five to 99 years behind bars. We have a defender's update in the upcoming public corruption trial. Michelle Barrientes Vela, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez, fighting back to stay on the case. In a motion filed this week, the lead prosecutor in the case says there is no evidence the DA's office has any conflict of interest. The motion referring to claims made by the ex-constable's attorneys, including comments made by Gonzalez's one-time political consultant. In June, the consultant Robert Vargas III was accused of saying he would run an opponent against the judge in the case if she, quote, didn't do the right thing, end quote. But Anthes Vela's attorneys say Vargas' close political ties to the DA have created a conflict of interest. They say the former constable, who faces five public corruption charges, cannot receive a fair trial. The case is tentatively scheduled to go to trial in early December. We continue to follow the latest when it comes to that deadly shooting in New Mexico on the set of Alec Baldwin's new movie. This morning, authorities continue to search for answers, friends and family members mourning Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer whose life was cut tragically short. ABC's Christine Sloan explains. This evening, a candlelight vigil in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in honor of Helena Hutchins, about an hour from the movie set where she lost her life. You know, in this, in a film industry, which is super competitive, it's not enough to have a talent. It's good to have um, this uh, human appealing personality. And I think this is what literally moves you forward. And she had it. Investigators are looking into why a prop gun that police say was fired by actor Alec Baldwin killed the 42 year old cinematographer and injured the director on the set of the Western inspired film Rust. A member of the camera crew says he and some crew members had walked off the set due to gun safety concerns, that their concerns were brushed off by producers, and there were two previous accidental discharges twice in the same day within 10 minutes. According to a search 
search warrant, the assistant director told police he didn't know there were rounds in the gun he gave to Baldwin. Hutchins seen in this Instagram picture posted from the set was hailed as a rising star behind the camera. She just radiated a vibe. You know, it's that like um, X factor, unknowable, strange thing. Alec Baldwin tweeting Friday, there are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic accident that took the life of Helena Hutchins, a wife, mother and deeply admired colleague of ours. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Happening today, if you have any medications lying around the house you need to get rid of, you have a chance. Uh, Methodist Healthcare hosting its annual opioid take back event, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., three different locations around the city. Medications that will be accepted include any over the counter or prescribed prescriptions of hydrocodone, oxycodone, and tramadol. For any information about where, when you can drop it off, or any location, just head to kset.com, click on the story. Also happening today, community baby shower and resource fair for soon to be in new moms. It's toasted by the birthplace by Texas Vista Medical Center. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the southwest side on Barlight Boulevard, north of I-35. It's free and open to the public. There will be door prizes and drawings for baby items you might need. There will also be activities for children. All right, time now, 638, 69 degrees out. Still ahead, a recap, a recap of last night's game. Big game, champion Elmo Heights. We're going to have a look at the biggest touchdown passes. Oh, look at that. Clutch catches, big TDs, big tackles. And are you feeling greenwashed? Are options that claim to help the environment overwhelming you up next? What you can do to really help the environment? It is foggy out there at 638, 69 degrees. Sarah Spivey will let us know if, if we're actually going to feel like fall anytime soon. She'll explain when we come back. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Building an Ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts and they each have a specific purpose. Bring more life and love to your ofrenda. Involve more family and friends. Ask the children to create art or papel picados. The adults can prepare the offerings like the departed's favorite dishes. Then come together to build and share stories. Remember, this isn't a time for tears. It's a time for celebration. So make a playlist of your lost loved one's favorites and fill the room with music. The night of October 31st is the perfect family night. Spirits are just beginning their journey back to us. Speaking of journey, let's add Don't Stop Believing. She really loved that one. Grocery bags, clothes, and even your produce can have an impact on climate change. Something as simple as a cotton t-shirt you're wearing may be hurting the environment. So according to the New York Times, making one shirt uses more water than a single person drinks in an entire year. So what are five easy ways you can actually help out the environment? Jonathan Goto explains. The effects can be felt worldwide, but the more evidence we see, the more we ignore. And there's a term for it called ecological overload. We're getting comfortably numb because we feel ineffective. What can you do to become effective? Start small with the grocery bags, but which is better for your household? Cotton bags need to be reused 131 times, paper bags three times, and plastic only once if they are properly recycled to reduce their emissions. Fast fashion is mass producing new items at a rapid speed. By 2030, 134 million tons of textiles are expected to be thrown out per year. Another student quit buying clothes. She went to the thrift shop. And what about your food consumption? 40% of food produced in the U.S. is rejected by supermarkets annually. Companies like Misfit Market and Imperfect Foods are selling misshapen or bruised produce for up to 40% off grocery store prices. Travel is another leading contributor to carbon emissions, but you can offset your carbon footprint by donating to programs that are focused on reducing emissions. Sites like the Gold Standard and Green E calculate how much money each person needs to give to pay back the toll they take on the environment. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
Well, time now, 644. We saw some fog out there this morning. Almost 70 degrees out there, though. Spooky looking. Yeah, spooky looking, but not spooky feeling. <laughs> it, uh, well, depends on what you think is spooky, because it is going to be warm and muggy all day long, and many of us don't love that. Uh, but there are some areas that are getting some rain this morning, mainly southeast of San Antonio, but still in the KSAT 12 viewing area. Cuero and uh, Lavaca County, you're going to be getting some showers here very shortly as well. Now, there is is a chance for rain in San Antonio today, but the rain chance is only 10%. All right, it's not going to be this uh, rained out <laughs> kind of a Saturday for you. It's just that in the afternoon between about 2 p.m. 7 p.m. We're going to have to watch out for a couple of uh, very stray showers, especially east of I-35. In general, though, it's going to be a warm and muggy day. We'll still be cloudy through 10 with skies clearing into the afternoon, 86 for the high. It'll be breezy too. South Southeast winds today at 5 to 15, gusting up to 20, and the sun is going to set at 655 tonight, and it's going to be a mild evening. We'll not get below the 70 degree mark throughout the remainder of the day today. It is currently 71 cloudy degrees outside right now. You can see the fog there on the horizon uh, with this tower camera a little bit lower to the ground, but still seeing some fog there. South southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Visibility down to six miles at the airport, but look down at Stinson down to half a mile at Stinson. And so outside of the city center, we're going to see a little bit heavier fog or more dense fog rather. And in fact, you can see in Pleasanton visibility is down to a quarter of a mile, quarter mile visibility in Catula as well. Again, a mild morning, 74 Gonzalez, 71 in New Braunfels, 65 in New Valley, 70 in Del Rio, 66 in Kerrville, but you're feeling every single degree of the temperature out there because the humidity is fairly high. It is a warm morning all across the state of Texas, but look to the north. You can see how across the Rockies temperatures are in the 40s. This is a cold front. Unfortunately, it's going to tease us. It's going to approach through Monday, and in fact, because it's going to be close on Monday but not moving through, it's going to compress the air and cause it to be warmer on Monday. In fact, the high temperature Monday will challenge records. We're going for a high right now forecast at 90 degrees. The record for the day 91. So it's going to be hot or warm rather through Monday, but then an approaching Pacific system, tropical, what will be tropical depression brick, will bring a little bit of moisture to us across Texas, and that'll combine with a cold front that will actually move through. And so it looks like Tuesday night into Wednesday, we'll have a shot at some rain, although the rain chance is not really necessarily that great, about a 30 to 40% chance right now, but still a shot at rain in our forecast Tuesday to Wednesday night. Then that front will move through, bringing windy, cooler, and drier conditions. And if you've been hoping for some crisp fall mornings, that is in our forecast. After that front moves through Tuesday night into Wednesday, look at Thursday and Friday morning. Our mornings will drop down likely to near 50 degrees and even in the 40s in many spots as we head into Halloween weekend. Until then, though, morning lows are going to be well above average. Tomorrow morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, we'll be looking at mornings right near 70 degrees. We'll see some morning fog uh, and some clouds through Tuesday as well. And again, tomorrow, a 10% chance for a stray shower, a lot like today, just a couple of degrees warmer. And then on Tuesday during the day, a 20% chance as that front approaches 30% overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. It'll be windy Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, but our highs will be much cooler. Highs only in the low 80s, near 80 degrees with those comfortable and chilly mornings in the forecast as well. So changes are coming. We just got to be patient through the next few days. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 70 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. We're starting off one and one, but we got some great highlights. Keldon Johnson, dunks, shots, defense. We got everything you need to know. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, three, seven, seven, fireball, zero, daily, four, one, nine, four, two, fireball, six. And cash five, two, 12, 19, 22, 33. Did you play? I didn't. Uh, not, not high enough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Mega million, nine, 14, 26, 29, 66. Big number, 22, Mega Pyre, three. Good luck. We'll be right back.
Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. We're starting off morning sports with some high school football and highlights. Champion Chargers from Bernie taking the, trying to take the lead at District 15-5A Division Two. They have to get past the undefeated Alamo Heights Mules, and take a look at that. That is a heck of a start. Quarterback James Sobey going up top. Rhett Anderson leap and grab corner of the end zone. Love it, Mules up 7-0. They're going to take a two-touchdown lead for the Chargers to get on the board. It is a 14-9 game. Chargers quarterback Carson Kaiser escaping the pocket. Beautiful. Look at that, Ryan Brandon, crowd goes wild. Great grab, 31 yards, court champion, go for two. Get it to a 17-14 lead at halftime. Mules come back, this time 30 yards out. Mules up 21-17 in the third. Number three with seven points. And that's it, that's your final. Alamo Heights win, 21-17. Let's take a look at the rest of the scores. We got a lot. Judson, 33, Smithson Valley, 32. Ooh, barn burner. South Sand, six, Steel, 56. J6, Brennan, 69. Champion, 17. And like we said, Alma Heights, 21. We had a whole lot of scores. Our crews were busy last night. Rio Grande City, 0. Southwest Legacy, 28. Reagan, 35. Roosevelt, 7. MacArthur, 10. Churchill, dominating performance, 42. Lee, 0. Sarah Spivey's alum. Clark, did I get that right? Got it. 49 points. Look at that. I love it. All right, we're not done yet. We got MB Canyon, 46. Look at this, high scoring, gotta love it. Veterans Memorial, 62. Navarro, zero. Wimberley, 27. Kennedy, 27. Highlands, 24. Sam Houston, 42. And look at this, Memorial, 45. Whew. We're gonna have a lot more coming up in the next hour. But before that, we got full court press. Look at some highlights. Spurs taking on the Nuggets last night in Denver. Keldon Johnson, the Olympian, the gold medal, is 27 points, too shy of his career high. Derek White's adding 16. Meanwhile, the Nuggets and reigning MVP Nikola Jokic, 28 points, 16 rebounds. The Nuggets led by three at halftime, 83-72 early in the fourth. San Antonio reeled off 10 straight points, 83-82. Derek White gave the Spurs one last chance with a three-pointer with 106 left, but Monte Morris made a jumper that sealed the deal for the Nuggets. You love the steal and layup. But Denver passed the Spurs 102-96. Up next, don't worry, we got a long season. This is only game two of 82. We're starting off 1-1. The Spurs taking on the Milwaukee Bucks here at home. Tip-off set. For 7:30, and of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say congratulations to the Astros. Thank you, <laughs> Astros fans. Next stop, World Series. Very excited. And Go Strohs. This could be Strohs, but also UTSA. Ranked UTSA first time, taking on Louisiana Tech later today, and we're gonna have so much more on sports, on You know news. what, the lines were long outside of Academy last mm. night. I didn't go, but I saw it on social media. I Everyone's gotta, getting their Astro shirts. Right, there you go. Time now, 6.55, 71 degrees out. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the onset tragedy that killed a crew member and injured another. What a search warrant is revealing about the prop gun handed to Alec Baldwin, the actor's public statement about the accident and what we're learning about the conditions on set. Plus new information about kids and Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine, what one family involved in the children's trial is saying about the experience and booster distribution for all three vaccines is now underway. And Shop Smart, how to navigate soaring supermarket prices, insider hacks for stocking up and saving. It's all ahead here on GMA. A man is shot and tased on the city's west side. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police say that man was driving around Southwest 19th Street and Saltillo Road. That's near Benavides Park and the city's on the city's west side shortly after 11 p.m. last night. Police tell us the car had no tail lights. The license plates didn't match the vehicle description. And how about this? The driver did not attempt to take off. They say he was driving at about 20 miles per hour before he got out of the car and walked through a gate of a home. Police say they asked the man to come out when they made efforts to detain him. It was a sudden move on his part that prompted police to tase him. Now the suspect was taken into custody. Police say charges are pending. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. We're seeing fog this morning out there. Visibility between about half a mile and a few miles. So exercise caution out there this morning. Today we'll see that fog lift mid morning. It'll be warm and muggy all day long. 86 for the high with a stray shower possible this afternoon. It's going to be similar weather tomorrow and then near record breaking heat Monday near 90. Finally, a front moves through Tuesday night to Wednesday. That'll cool us down. Bring us a chance for some rain. Hey guys, make sure you watch us at 8. We have David Elder coming oh, in. Oh, look at that. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12.
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A gathering at an east side home ends in gunfire. Two people shot. We have the latest from the investigation from police. And a man tased by officers after a call for suspicious driver going around a west side neighborhood. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Can't see much from this live cam, but it is 71 degrees out. Hopefully this fog goes away throughout the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, October 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Have on the orange tie. Go Astros! Go Astros. It's actually multifaceted because Astros, yes, going to the World Series. Woo -woo. Third time in five years. Wow. But also UTSA taking on Louisiana Tech. They're ranked first time in program history. Go Keeping Runners. it alive. Go Roadrunners. I was telling Max earlier, so it's like a tradition in South Texas. After the Astros win, mm -hmm. people line up outside of Academy because they want to have that, that shirt. I mm -hmm. didn't go because I was asleep. Also, I don't really You're like also smart enough to avoid the crazy. I don't like the crowds and stuff, but I am excited for the Astros. Sarah Spivey, that fog out there, is it going to lift anytime soon? It is very soon here. We'll see that fog lift, but for the first part of the day, expect some of this fog, maybe even a little mist out there as well in places. Let's take a look outside with live cam. You can see that fog there on the distance, uh, out on the horizon, off in the distance. Visibility down to seven miles at the airport, but down to half a mile up I-10 toward Bernie Stage Airfield, down to a mile in Castroville. So you can see that outside of the city center, where temperatures are just a smidge cooler, we're dealing with uh, some fog. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Pleasanton, it's 73 degrees. 68 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 72 in New Braunfels, 71 at uh, JBSA Randolph. So a warm day today. It is going to be a not-so-fall weekend, but still a decent day to get outside and enjoy some time outdoors. Uh, it's still a decent weekend rather. Uh, temperatures are going to be in the mid to upper 80s all weekend long and we will have a 10% chance for a stray shower both today and tomorrow. Still feeling a lot more like an end of summer weekend rather than a fall like weekend. There is a cold front on the way though. We'll talk about that, how much it'll drop our temperatures and whether or not it'll bring an increasing rain chance coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for the responsible person responsible for shooting two people overnight. All this happening at a home on the city's east side. So take a look. This all happened around 2.30 this morning. This is a home on Astoria Drive. That is near East Houston and Upland Road. Police on the scene telling us the homeowners had a few people over. That is when an argument began. That's when someone pulled out a gun, shot a man and woman in the leg. Now they're both taken to the hospital. Both are expected to recover. The shooter took off before officers arrived. At last check, homeowners were still being questioned. A call for suspicious man driving around a west side neighborhood ends with a man being tased by officers. San Antonio police got a call around 1130 last night for a man driving around a church near Benavides Park, allegedly bothering people. Officers began to follow the car and the driver slowly came to a stop at a southwest 19th and Saltillo streets. The man walked through a gate at a home nearby. Officers asked the man to step outside the gate, but he refused. That's when officers approached him to make an arrest. The man moved toward an officer and that's when the man was tased. It's unclear what the man was doing in that area and what charges he may face. Remembering baby James Chidas. A service held yesterday to honor the baby boy who was found months after being reported missing back in January. His ashes released to his great aunt last month. Yesterday's services held at St. Gabriel Catholic Church. The baby's mother, Delaney Chavez, accused in the case. Newly uncovered evidence could push back the murder trial of an Air Force major who was accused of killing his wife. Prosecutors say a disc containing about 100,000 items related to the case of Andre McDonald is now being reviewed. Investigators say it was only recently found after a previous detective on the case retired and the new detective came in and saw that disc. Prosecutors only have two weeks to review the new evidence before the information needs to be handed over to McDonald's legal team. It's unclear if prosecutors will meet that deadline or if the trial date will be delayed again. The latest date was set for November 8th. On November 5th, a hearing is scheduled for an update. Now to a traffic alert to tell you about on the city's west side. Part of 410 closed this weekend for construction. Text now tells us the northbound lanes of 410 will be closed from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. They will reopen Monday morning, 5 a.m., just in time for your Monday morning commute. Now crews will be working on the bridge in that area, so make sure you plan accordingly. 
Well, happening today, the sixth annual Wellness Expo and Converse, and it's an event whose mission is of the well-being of our military veterans. We are Military City USA. This is so important for our community. Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Good morning, Jonathan. What's going on out there? Very important for our community, Max. I'm glad you said that. I am located in Converse, Texas at American Legion Post 593 with Shaughnessy Rodriguez, the founder, president of Wellness for Warriors, but most importantly of all those titles, a military mom. Shaughnessy, what, are, what can folks expect uh, here today? What's taking place? We are having our sixth annual Wellness Expo and we're incorporating um, a lot of people coming out, exhibitors and sponsors and family, kids activities and our call to action is fundraising. So we're really here hoping the community can come out and support that um, as well as making a donation online and just have a family fun day and in honor of all our veterans, we're standing here as you're a veteran, thank you. Um, for our freedom, giving it back. So again, this is an event, uh, a fundraising event catered around or catered for the well-being of our military veterans folks. So we're going to continue to hang out here for the rest of this morning. Shaughnessy, you and I will be going for some coffee here, which we're going to talk about here real soon. Max and Sarah, see you here in the next half hour. Thank you, Jonathan. Also happening today, if you have any medications around the house that you need to get rid of, today is your chance. Methodist Healthcare Hosting its annual opioid take back event starting at 10 a.m. going to 1 p.m. We have three locations across the city. Medications that will be accepted include any over the counter or prescribed prescriptions of hydrocodone, oxycodone and tramadol. For all information where you can drop it off, what are those locations, times, just head to the story ksat.com. Well, if you're a new mom or soon to be mom, there is a community baby shower and resource fair later today to help prepare you for baby. It's being hosted by the birthplace at Texas Vista Medical Center. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the city's southwest side on Bar Light Boulevard north of I-35. It's free and open to the public. There will be door prizes and drawings for baby items that you might need. There will also be activities for the kids. All right, time now, 807, 71 degrees out. The Astros, they've done it again, and they're heading back to the World Series. Still ahead on GMSA, a recap of last night's game and a look at our other sports headlines. That's right, and maybe you want to watch the big game on a big TV. If you're looking to upgrade that media room at home, if you have a media room, we can help. We got perfect tips to help with your perfect screening area. That's next. Dia de los Muertos is just around the corner, which means that the preparations are in full swing to honor, celebrate, and welcome back your loved one who has passed away. And we want to hear from you. Share with us your must-have items for your ofrendas or altars, and also tell us a little bit about the people that you are honoring this year on Day of the Dead. So we want you to submit those pictures at the link below, and we hope that you'll celebrate this holiday with us. And we'll share those pictures and stories on KSAT News Now on Dia de Muertos or Day of the Dead. Well, everyone is spending more time at home these days, and that likely means more time watching TV and movies at home. So if you're ready for an upgrade to your in-home theater, you're in luck. Okay, so in this morning's Ask Angie segment, Jonathan Cotto has some tips to set up the perfect viewing experience for you and the family. Watching TV and movies at home is something nearly everyone spends time doing, and there are a few things to consider to take that home viewing experience to the next level. Before you put together your media room, Think about where you might want it in your home. How much space are you going to need and what's going to be the best spot for watching TV and movies? It may be that it fits into your existing living room, but you also might want to consider upgrading an underutilized space and repurposing it. This could be a dining room, a playroom, perhaps a finished garage or basement. You'll want to think through all these options so that you have the media room of your dreams. Depending on room size and budget, you can start small by upgrading your sofa or TV and getting a sound bar. Or you can go one step further with surround sound. And when deciding where to put your TV, choose a wall that doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight. This will help avoid glare. And if that's not possible, consider adding window treatments that can block the sun. Your media room is likely a place you're going to spend lots of time. So you'll want to make sure that it's comfortable. That means when you're setting it up, focus more on relaxation and less on formality. 
Chairs and sofas with deeper seats or even a sectional can be a great way to provide a more casual vibe. If you're not sure how to set up the space, it can also be a great time to call in an interior designer to help you think about how to set up for that perfect viewing experience. If you're committing a space to being a home theater, think about insulation to the ceiling, exterior, and interior walls to keep the sound in, and also consider the type of lighting you install. Recessed lighting and sconces with dimmers are great for creating the right ambiance. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Oh, the fog looks like it's getting better, Sarah. It is. As the sun uh, rises, we're going to see the temperature rise, and that difference between the temperature and the dew point is going to get greater and allow for the fog to lift. So, science lesson for the Boom. Day. Drop yeah. the mic over here. Let's take a look at the radar, though. There are some showers and storms on the radar, just not really around San Antonio, but still in the KSAT 12 viewing area. Zooming in closer to Bear County, some light rain mist possible near Calaveras Lake and then off to the south and to the east you can see some storms near Edna pushing into Lavaca County as well. Uh, the chance for rain today really is going to be a little uh, east of, of uh, I-35. Now we'll still carry a 10% chance for a stray shower in San Antonio, especially this afternoon, but today is mainly just going to be a warm and muggy day for us. It's not going to feel like fall today. Outside right now, 71 degrees, visibility down to seven miles. You can see that fog there off in the distance starting to improve. South winds at 10 miles per hour. Visibility, though, still very low at Bernie Stage Airfield. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile. So fairly dense fog up I-10 toward Bernie. Uh, now in Castroville, visibility is down to three miles, down to a quarter in Pleasanton, down to a mile and a half in Uvalde. Uh, but good visibility out toward Del Rio, where it's not necessarily as humid, but a warm start to the day. Our average morning low this time of year is 58 degrees and we're 10 to 15 degrees warmer than that outside right now. 72 at New Braunfels, 74 in Gonzales, 73 in Pleasanton, 70 in Del Rio. On the future cast, you can see that those morning clouds are going to give way to afternoon sun. The heavier rain will be well to the east of San Antonio, closer to the Houston area. But into this afternoon, there could be one or two isolated showers. So that's why there's a 10% chance for a stray shower. Don't bank on the rain, though. Bank on the warm uh, weather and the humidity. Uh, dew points are going to stay high all day long. It'll be 88 for the high in Pleasanton, 90 in Del Rio, 91 in Catula, 85 in New Braunfels, 82 in Kerrville. And here in San Antonio, here's what the forecast looks like. 76 at 10, still fairly cloudy, but then in the afternoon, we'll start to see those clouds break up. It'll be breezy at times. South southeast winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour. 86 for the high in San Antonio. Sun will set at, seven, at 655, rather and it's going to be a mild evening in the 70s. On the radar and satellite, we are going to see things shake up a little bit in our forecast by the middle of the week because of some Pacific moisture from what is Hurricane Rick, now a hurricane in the Pacific. It's expected to make landfall uh, Monday as a hurricane in western Mexico and then fall apart across the mountainous terrain. It is going to sling us a little bit of moisture, though, and that's going to combine with a cold front and allow for a chance for rain later on this week. But until then, on Monday, a cold front is going to approach from North Texas, but it's not going to move through San Antonio. Instead, it's actually going to compress the air around San Antonio and give us one of our hottest days uh, in October. 90 degrees for the high temperature on Monday. That's close to that record high of 91. That front will miss us, but then another front is going to combine with that Pacific moisture, bring us a small chance for rain Tuesday night into Wednesday. Better rain chances in East Texas but a small chance here. And then from that front, we're going to have a nicer forecast for the end of the week. It'll be dry with cool mornings and feeling a lot more like fall. So in the seven day forecast, again, a few days here of unfall like weather, very warm and humid near that record heat on Monday, 30% chance for storms Tuesday into Wednesday. Then it'll become windy and more fall like mornings will be chilly. Afternoons will be comfortable as we head into Halloween weekend. I like that. And 49 of course, in there. yeah, we have that uh, Dia de Muertos festival mm -hmm. on Friday and the parade on Friday night. Things look good and feeling a lot more like fall. There you go. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 817, 71 degrees out. Well, coming up next, a look at last night's big game coverage. That's right. Big game, big game coverage. We got Bernie champion Almo Heights. Heck of a barn burner. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. A busy night of high school football. This week's game of the week matchup between sixth ranked Bernie champion and fifth ranked Alamo Heights. Let's take a look at the highlights. Chargers trying to take a lead in the district 15 5A Division 2, but came up short against the Mules. Alamo Heights takes a two touchdown lead before Bernie champion would get on the board of the Chargers up at halftime, but the Mules kick back and they would get the win 21-17. Got some great highlights, great catches, great touchdowns. Number one, getting seven for all the big game coverage highlights and scores. Go online, ksat.com, and on the BGC app. Of course, we are far from Dan with high school football. We got a few games today. Jefferson at Lanier, 2 p.m. Brandeis, Madison, 2 p.m. O'Connor and Stevens. We got a late game, 7 p.m. Marshall and Harlan. Also seven highlights tonight on the night beat. And of course, tomorrow night on Instant Replay. Here from high school football to Spurs. Spurs fall to the Nuggets last night in Denver, 96 to 102, making them one and one to start the season. Don't worry though, we got 80 games left. They're now to be hosting the defending NBA chance, the Milwaukee Bucks tonight, 7:30. This is going to be the Bucks' only visit of the year here to San Antonio. And here we go. It's one of the reasons I'm wearing the orange tie. Astros headed to the World Series after shutting out the Red Sox 5-0, Game Six of the ALCS. Houston winning the series 4-2. This is the crazy set. Astros third trip to the World Series in five years. They are now playing the waiting game. So who will it be? Who is going to win the NLCS? We got the Dodgers or the Braves. Braves do lead the series 3-2. I was watching the game the other day, and the Braves did what a lot of Atlanta sports teams do. They gave up a huge lead. So we'll see. We got a long time. Go Astros. There you go. Also, UTSA playing Louisiana Tech today. Orange tie. Go Roadrunners. 822, <laughs> 72 degrees out. All right, coming up next. We are talking Halloween edition of Tech Seats. We're talking one of the most haunted hotels across the country, a haunted ghost tour. Ooh, scary stuff. I've been here for almost five years now, and, I, and I've never really experienced anything um, until you know, at the start of the pandemic, we started getting calls. Um, I was actually staying here on property because, um, you know, we took a big hit. A lot of people weren't traveling at that time. And so um, I ended up just moving into the hotel for a couple months and I got a call that um, somebody was calling from a room on the 12th floor and um, and they had actually called 911. And, um, when I went to that room, no one was checked into that room. There was nobody in that room. The fact that this building was a hospital at one point and the basement level was a morgue is already pretty creepy. But then you hear the stories that people have shared about their experiences here, and it just sends shivers up your spine. So I've actually wrote, written a book um, that is a compilation of, of many, many different stories. And uh, so it's the haunted Emily Morgan. We, we handed it out to all of our guests on Halloween. Halloween, what do you got going on over here? What? Oh, still some Halloween candy. <laughs> nice. Is Reese's Cups the number one Halloween candy? Apparently it is. Yeah. I, I mean, for you, but yes, for the nation it was. But it's number my number one. two. I'll take okay. it. What's number one? Skittles, duh. Uh, all right, time now, 827, <laughs> 72 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, a fire erupts in a home on the city's southwest side overnight. Why firefighters had a tough time putting out the flames. Plus, new details on what exactly happened during that terrifying, deadly shooting involving Alec Baldwin on a movie set in New Mexico. Plus, Chipotle is taking a popular item off its menu. We'll tell you why later in the show. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. 8.30 this morning, Saturday. I almost said September. Saturday, October 23rd. No, don't push us back. <laughs> don't push us back. We're a week away from Halloween weekend. Have you figured out the costume yet? Yes. I can't say. You can't say, it's but you're ready to go? Eh, kind of. Pretty much. For those much. who don't know, Sarah Costa, infamous for her Halloween costumes. I just love Halloween. I love dressing up. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fun. Okay. Do you like give out candy or you go trick-or-treating? Oh, well, I wish I could still go trick-or-treating. I think people might think that's weird, so oh, I give out candy. Do you guys know how, like, um, Heidi Klum goes all out with her Halloween costumes? Yeah. She was Shrek or something like that. That's like Sarah Costa. Uh. But, but <laughs> Heidi Klum has a professional team of makeup artists. Sarah Costa is her own professional team. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sarah artists. Spidey. So I'm looking that. forward to this year's costume. Uh, I've, I've got a costume lined up as well, so we'll see about that a little later. 
<laughs> okay, so let's take a look outside. It did look a little spooky this morning with some fog out there, and we still do have areas of fog out there, although the visibilities are improving as a whole around San Antonio and the metro area. Visibility still down to two and a half miles, though, at Stinson, down to two at Port SA, down to two at Bernie Stage Airfield, although visibility was just at half a mile there about 30 minutes ago. So as you can see, visibility still improving, uh, but practically zero down in Pleasanton and in Cruz of Springs down to half a mile in Yavaldi as well. So yes, if you're traveling around early this morning, don't be surprised if in the nooks and crannies around South Central Texas, you can see some fog this morning. Although it will not feel like fall, perhaps you want to do some fall like activities. The corn maze forecast for South Central Texas this weekend calls for a warm and muggy weather, but amazing. Otherwise, a 10% chance for a stray shower today and and tomorrow will be close to 90 degrees on Sunday. We'll be flirting with uh, record breaking temperatures by Monday. We need a cold front. Thankfully, there is one in the forecast. I'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, new this morning, firefighters trying to determine what caused a house fire last night on the southwest side. It happened around 930 last night on Candalia Avenue. That's in the neighborhood between Southwest Military and Somerset Road. When firefighters, firefighters arrived, they found heavy flames coming from the left side of the house. They had a tough time putting it out because the fire from the home had two different rooftops. Firefighters did manage to stop it from spreading to the other half of the house. No one was home at the time and there were no injuries. In the morning headlines, anger rising, pointing to the streets of Haiti as the effort to free the kidnapped missionaries and their families intensifies. They've been held captive for a week now. ABC's Marcus Moore is on the ground with the latest. The effort to rescue those 17 men, women and children is still very much underway, but officials here have been tight lipped about what, if any, progress they have been able to make. But as you know, the FBI did make contact with the 400 Mawozo gang, which is accused of kidnapping those missionaries and is holding them hostage, demanding a million dollars per person. This is still a delicate situation, so very little information has been released, but the White House is saying that it's doing everything possible to find a re resolution. Also, that the U.S. U.S. continues to offer humanitarian aid and other assistance to Haiti. But I want to point you to this chilling video that surfaced this week of the suspected gang leader accused of holding the missionaries and children hostage. Authorities are reviewing this video as part of their investigation into this brazen kidnapping. And in the tape, or on the video that's been circulating online, the gang leader threatens to kill the hostages if their demands are not met. And as that effort uh, unfolds to resolve this, conditions on the ground here in Haiti have been worsening. Widespread protests crippled the city on Thursday. People were protesting over gang violence as those gangs control much of the city. There's also political turmoil here and economic troubles like gas shortages. All of these issues are only adding to the urgency of that effort to rescue those 17 men, women, and children who are being held hostage. People here in Haiti and across the globe are praying for a safe outcome to this, this crisis that's unfolding here. Guys. That was Marcus Moore reporting. In other news, the FDA now says the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine looks effective for young children. The agency posted their new assessment last night for children ages 5 to 11. There is a risk of heart inflammation for vaccinated children, but experts claim the danger of COVID-19 is much greater. FDA vaccine advisors will meet next week to discuss officially allowing kids as young as five to get the shots. Pfizer says its vaccine is more than 90% effective. This morning, we are learning more about what exactly happened during that deadly shooting on the set of Alec Baldwin's new movie in New Mexico. A search warrant issued by the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office shows that the incident occurred when an assistant director handed Baldwin one of three prop guns. During filming, the assistant director then yelled, quote, cold gun. Cold gun means the gun was not supposed to have any live rounds inside. An investigator says in the affidavit, the assistant director did not know the gun had those live rounds. The gun fired by Baldwin hit cinematographer Helena Hutchins in the chest, killing her. According to the affidavit, authorities have seized all of the weapons, the cameras and the computer equipment from the set. 
Well, new data just released by the U.S. Border Patrol shows that an unprecedented number of arrests were made at the southern border just last year. The agency says it made nearly 1.6 million arrests for unlawful crossings on the U.S.-Mexico border over the past fiscal year, which runs from October through September. That's the highest annual number of arrests on record. Since March of last year, Customs and Border Protection have been enforcing a public health order known as Title 42, which allows for rapid expulsion of migrants. Meanwhile, in Mexico, a new caravan of migrants will leave Tapachula in the state of Chiapas to Mexico City. The migrants of the so-called mother caravan will be mainly people from Haiti and other Central American countries. The director of People Without Borders says the goal is to process permits for the migrants to be able to circulate through Mexican territory. Back here at home, happening later this morning, a wellness event for our military veterans. It is the 6th Annual Wellness for Warriors Expo, right over there in Converse. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Tell us more about this event. Good morning, Sarah. Yes, I'm here at the American Legion Post 593 in Converse, Texas, amongst my brothers and sisters who have served in the U.S. military. With me is retired U.S. Army Colonel and Director for the American Legion Writers. Paul, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, I know this effort would not be possible without your contribution and your organization's contribution as well. How has that team up worked out? It works out great because this is the first time that we're actually um, co-sponsoring with Wellness for Warriors. This is their sixth anniversary, and we said we're, we're there to help you out because we do the exact same thing. We support our, our veterans throughout the community. We have our Veterans Helping Veterans program, and so this is a win-win for both wellness for warriors and American Legion riders. Now, Paul, now we understand this is a fundraising event. Being able to take care of our country's veterans, veterans here in our area, it's not cheap. It's not necessarily inexpensive. You were just telling me about a story of how quickly you guys were able to build an on-ramp for a wheelchair for a veteran in need who was discharged from the hospital. Uh, how quickly was that and how, were the resources available for that? How did that work out? In, in that, that situation, the person that we needed to build a, a wheelchair ramp for, he agreed to pay for all the wood. And so it was just getting about five people together and it was time sensitive. So we got them all together in one day, we built it the next day and then came back and finished up the touch up work, paint and everything else. So it was a win-win situation for him and he's very pleased. And um, not all of them are like that. Some of the situations we have to get back to them about a month later so we can do some fundraising events to gain some money to buy the wood and as you know, wood's not that, that cheap nowadays, so. Thank you so much, Paul. Appreciate your time and being here and doing this. Max, Sarah, in a matter of 30 minutes, these veteran business-owned resources have popped up. We're going to continue to hang out here, learn a little bit more. Opening ceremonies at 10 o'clock, so if you're interested in coming out to American Legion Post 593, you have time to do so. Max, Sarah. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. Just about 840, 72 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, why Chipotle is ending their smoked brisket promotion oh. early. Sorry, Max. That's okay. Up next, we're highlighting some of the amazing and life-saving work that's being done at Texas Biomedical Research Institute fighting off COVID-19. Good morning and welcome back. A new episode of KSAT Explains is now out. This week, the team focusing on the spotlight of some of the groundbreaking work that is being done right now at Texas Biomedical Research Institute. And it's been happening since the start of the pandemic. Case that explains producer Lexi Salazar steps into the breakdown booth to talk about what you can expect from this week's episode. At this point, it's hard to imagine what life was like before March 2020. I can no longer have a conversation face to face with someone without thinking about the aerosol particles being spread in the air. Every ache and pain makes me think, is this COVID? And coughing makes me self-conscious. So in some ways, it seems as though everything has changed. But in a lot of ways, the past 19 months have really been a blur. Um, there have just been so many life-altering events that have happened in that relatively narrow time frame that I think it's really easy to overlook the incredible scientific breakthroughs that we've all witnessed during this time. It's also easy to forget just how much of that research, the research that's been behind these biomedical breakthroughs has been done right here in our very own backyard at Texas Biomedical Research Institute. And so for this episode of Case That Explains, we kind of wanted to, you know, just say pause, like let's take a look at all of the research, all of the scientific developments that have led us to where we are, that led to the creation of 
these vaccines that led to the creation of these COVID-19 treatments. In this episode of Case That Explains, we're kind of pulling the curtain back and we're meeting some of the researchers that have been doing this vital work at Texas Biomedical Research Institute. They're taking us through how their lives have changed, how their work has changed. They're walking us through some of these major breakthroughs that we've witnessed. And then they're also telling us how those breakthroughs could potentially help us create future vaccines and future treatments for viruses and diseases that we don't even know about yet. KSAT Explains Biomedical Breakthroughs is available to watch on demand right now. You can catch it at ksat.com slash explains or the KSAT TV app available any way that you stream. 72 degrees at 845. Things already heating up. The fog seems like it's lifted, Sarah. That's exactly right. The fog is lifting, but we are seeing some areas with some rain. Now that's mainly east of San Antonio and in San Antonio, the chance for rain today, it's only 10%, but it is going to be muggy all day long. Let's take a look at the live radar areas southeast of San Antonio. Getting some rain include Lavaca County uh, as we're seeing some showers passing there as well. So again, there's really only going to be a 10% chance for rain in San Antonio today, uh, more like a 20% chance the further east of San Antonio, you go closer to the coast. So we're at 71 right now, but we'll be at 76 degrees by 10. It's still going to be fairly cloudy and then into the afternoon we'll be looking at skies clearing a 10% chance for an, an afternoon stray shower. But again, mainly a warm and muggy forecast for us. Let's take a look at those winds southeast gusting up to about 20 miles per hour and we'll see the sun set at about 655 this evening outside right now. Again, you can see on the horizon that the fog is starting to lift, but visibility is as low as zero down near Pleasanton, as low as two miles at Port SA, as low as five miles in Castroville. And we are seeing some improvement, though. Earlier visibility was down to about a quarter of a mile at Simpson, now improving to four miles visibility. Otherwise, it's warm. It's 71 degrees at the airport, 72 in New Braunfels, 74 in Gonzales, 73 in Pleasanton. A little bit cooler up in the hill country, but you still feel every degree of the thermometer right now because it's very, very humid outside dew points close to those temperatures. A wider view here, it's fairly mild across all of Texas, but you can see there's a clear divide between the warm air and the cooler air across the nation. Now this cold front looks tempting, but it's actually not going to be moving through. Uh, it's going to be stalling across parts of North Texas, but it's going to compress the air across South Central Texas as it approaches on Monday. And that means it's going to be very warm, borderline hot on Monday with a high temperature right near 90 degrees. That is close to the record of 91 for the day. So we've got today tomorrow and Monday where it's going to be uncomfortably warm outside at times. But then another front is going to move through a Tuesday and Wednesday and that is going to be able to move through and cool us down. It's going to mix with some moisture from uh, tropical depression Rick uh, and bring us a chance for showers and storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. Not as good of a chance as we saw a couple weeks ago where we got a good amount of rain. Most of the heavy rain should be in East Texas from this system but we'll still carry a 30 to 40 percent chance for showers and storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. Behind that front, though, it's going to feel a lot more like fall. And in fact, our morning lows are going to be very comfortable and even chilly by the weekend. 49 degrees, the forecast low for Friday morning. Until then, though, it's going to be warm and muggy, not feeling like fall at all. Uh, but uh, there is only a 10 percent chance for a stray shower or storm this weekend. So get out and enjoy it if you can uh, and know that on Tuesday, Monday rather, we'll be challenging those record highs. It's going to be hot, 90 degrees. We'll keep you informed as far as storm chances go when that front moves through Tuesday night into Wednesday. Feel a lot more like fall into Halloween weekend. Can't wait for next weekend. Mm. <laughs> Time now, 848, 72 degrees out. Take a look at some lotto numbers. Pick three, three, seven, seven, fireball zero, daily four, one, nine, four, two, fireball six. And your cash five, two, 12, 19, 22, 33. Mega Millions, 9, 14, 26, 29, 66, big number 22, Mega Pyre 3. Good luck. We'll be right back. Well, Max, it was only going to be on the menu for a limited <laughs> time anyways, but Chipotle is taking its smoked brisket off the menu sooner than scheduled because of simply how popular it was. Oh, wow. The company says the brisket promotion will end next month. Chipotle says the menu item has boosted sales and will probably offer brisket 
again in the future. Here's the thing. Well, I was just uh, talking to some of the guys in the booth. They're like, have you had it? I said, no, because why would I get Chipotle brisket when I have San Antonio brisket? Well, I mean, if, if it's like quick, cheap option. I'm not going to lie. I haven't been to Chipotle in like three years. That's it's great. great, but you know. Anyway, early voting underway for November 2nd elections right now on KSAT.com. We have a list of the polling locations, info about the eight proposed state constitutional amendments, and how to make sure you know you are registered to vote. So if you have any questions, just head to our website, click the Vote 2021 under the news tab. Early voting ends October 29th. Time now, 8.53, 72 degrees out. We'll try to get out and do something good today. Oh. It's National Make a Difference Day. How the like holiday that. began, that's next on GMSA. Love the enthusiasm. Time to take a look at some birthdays. First up, Heinz Bachman. Whoa, 100 years young and World War II veteran. Thank you so much for your service. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Heinz. And this is Mia. She turned 12 years old. Keep posting those birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. Happy birthday, Mia. All right, let's be honest. You should try to do it every day, but today is National Make a Difference oh. Day, a day when millions of people do something to improve the lives of others. So here's how it started. It was back in 1992. Organizations across the country encouraged people to make a difference on the fourth Saturday in October. The holiday has become the largest national day of community service in the country. You can celebrate by giving your time or just by simply saying a kind word of support to someone struggling. Let's all be nice to each other. There you go. Always be nice. Um, so what are you doing to make a difference today? I'm being nice to you, Max. Aww. And Sarah Spivey. So kind. Time now, 5, 856, 72 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA at 9, a local brass band spreads their love for New Orleans music. We're introducing you to Bear Brass in our 210 Trailblazers. And are you looking to get a new pet? Well, if you are, today is a great chance to do it. Make a difference. Up next, details on adoption events happening this morning. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. Just about 9 a.m. this Saturday, October 23rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning, your weekend with us. There's a lot going on today, but last couple days we both had off. What'd you do? Um, well, I discovered my Monarch caterpillars last mm. weekend on my milkweed, and then I went and checked on them, and they've gotten massive and nice. huge. Um, so I tented them with netting mm -hmm. and I'm feeding them and I'm counting them every day and I've gone down the rabbit hole with For it. For those who don't know, gardening. Gardening. That's all gardening. It's all, well, it's, yeah, it's part of my pollinator garden. Mm. I just, I just want to see them turn into butterflies. It's a really cool experience. You can follow, follow, follow my journey on Twitter and Instagram. There you go. Shameless plug to the Instagram. So Sarah Spivey, a good day to hit the garden. Yeah, I mean, if you don't mind sweating a little bit, because it is going to be warm and muggy. And in fact, we're seeing that mugginess outside right now in the form of fog. Now, visibility is improving around San Antonio, but there's still patchy fog out there. Meanwhile, dense fog for Pleasanton and Carrizo Springs. Visibility less than a quarter of a mile in Pleasanton, Carrizo Springs, and in Beeville. It is warm to start the day. It's 73 degrees outside. We're dealing with some clouds out there this morning. Morning. 73 in New Braunfels, 74 in Gonzales, uh, near 70 degrees in Kerrville, 64 in Rock Springs, and 71 in Del Rio. You know, last weekend was perfect fall weather, cold mornings, comfortable afternoons. It's going to be a not so fall weekend for us this weekend, but still all right to get outside and enjoy some time outdoors. A 10% chance for a stray shower today and tomorrow, and it's going to be warm and muggy. High temperatures in the mid to upper 80s both today and tomorrow, and by Monday, will be close to record breaking heat. We need a cold front. A cold front is in our forecast this week. I'll tell you more about that coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for the person responsible for shooting two people overnight at a home on the city's east side. It happened around 2.30 this morning at a home on Astoria Drive. That's near East Houston and Upland Road. Police say the homeowners had a few people over and an argument began. That's when someone pulled out a gun and allegedly shot a man and a woman in the leg. They were taken to the hospital and are expected to be okay. The shooter took off before officers arrived. The homeowners were questioned by detectives. Well, a call for a suspicious man driving around a west side neighborhood 
ends with that man being tased by officers. So this is what we know right now. San Antonio police tell us they got a call around 1130 last night for a man driving around a church near Benavides Park. He was causing a disturbance and officers began to follow the vehicle. The driver slowly came to a stop at Southwest 19th and Saltillo streets. Now the man walked through a gate at a home nearby. Officers asked the man to step outside the gate. He refused when officers approached him to make an arrest. The man moved towards him. And that is when the man was hit with the taser. Still unclear what the man was doing in the area and what charges he may now face. Walmart is recalling some room sprays due to potentially a deadly bacteria involves the Better Homes and Gardens branded essential oil infused aromatherapy room spray with gemstones. The bacteria that may be in the bottles can cause a potentially fatal condition. The illness investigated in four people in the U.S., including a case right here in Texas. Two of the cases ended in death. None of the victims traveled internationally, but the product was made overseas. If you own this, you are advised to double bag and box the item before returning it. Well, the technology industry in and around San Antonio is growing so fast. One of the many ca catalysts for this growth is Geekdom. It is a co-working space downtown. It provides a collaborative community with resources and opportunities to help our local businesses develop. So tomorrow on GMSA at 8 a.m., the CEO joins us live to talk about what the last decade has been like and what he anticipates the next decade looking like. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. Then join us tomorrow, GMSA, 8 a.m. Food, drinks, music, and prizes all happening today. The sixth annual Wellness for Warriors Wellness Expo. The event in partnership of the American Legion Writers aims to raise money for veterans with disabilities as well as to provide them with resources. Jonathan Cotto joining us live throughout the morning. Good morning, Jonathan. We understand a lot of partnerships within the expo are veteran-owned businesses. That's right. Very important contributions. And, and it's wonderful to see veterans just thriving and succeeding and to help other veterans hear people who have gone through the same journey, shared experiences, thriving and owning their own businesses, just like Jose Alaniz here, owner of Third Day Coffee Seguin. Jose, thank you so much for speaking with us this thank morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So you're a veteran-owned coffee business here, participating in the Wellness for Expo. What does this mean? What does this represent as a, as a veteran yourself? Well, it's a way for us to get back to the community, right? Uh, you know, we tend to give back to the veteran community first, and then, and then uh, us personally, our message is to share the message of Christ, uh, and then help our veterans and and support the villages where we get our coffee from. Now that is an interesting story in itself. How did this all start for you? I understand this is a, a work in progress. Yes. Uh, so we uh, on a trip overseas, we had coffee for the first time in my life. Uh, I was in the Navy, and we drank bad Navy coffee. Uh, and so, uh, first time I had real fresh roasted coffee. I wanted to replicate that and we were praying for a way to me get out of the job I worked for corporate America for many years and I was trying to get out of my last job was DOD we were praying for a way to me to separate from that and God put Ashley this gentleman right here uh, in front of us and he owns the farm in Honduras and I was praying for divine appointments and he reached out and said listen I feel like I'm being led to help you guys get your business going I don't know you talk to me so we started a conversation we got to know each other next thing you know Connie and I are in the mountains of Honduras uh, and and there's a real need there people don't understand how poor these people are you know a family of five makes about fourteen hundred dollars a year uh, and Ashley's nonprofit, LF Mission, supports these people, teaches them how to grow their own coffee. Uh, you know, he puts electricity in their homes. He's teaching them how to do septic so they can not have a hole in the ground. And uh, we've been able to be part of that. And part of that is that the coffee they make is not just regular coffee, it's specialty coffee. Mm -hmm. Specialty coffee has a score, and our score is between 85, 84, 85 to 87. It's on the high end, and so it's really high quality, hand selected by the ladies. Um, and then we, we get to support that mission. Every bag of coffee that we buy, every bag of coffee that somebody buys from us directly impacts veterans. It impacts us being able to share the message of Christ and it impacts directly the families in Honduras. Jose, thank you so much. It's an incredible story, and thank you for sharing that with us. Folks, the coffee here is amazing. I just had a taste of it, and it really is heavenly, to say the least. It's inspiring. My shipmate here, he mentioned bad Navy coffee. That's not a lie. As much as I love the Navy, it's so true. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Also happening today, the San Antonio Humane Society has two adoption events going on. The first is Puptoberfest. It's at Hops and Hounds, located at... 13838 Jones Maltzberger Road. 
They'll have beer, food, fun, and of course, pet adoptions. One dollar from each beer sold will go to benefit the Humane Society. It starts this morning at 11 and goes until 4 p.m. And also starting today, Sosi Spectacular Adoption Special at the San Antonio Humane Society. All cat and kitten adoption fees are waived during the event, which runs through tomorrow. The Humane Society open from noon until 7 p.m. If you're interested, they're located at 4804 Fredericksburg Road, or you can go online, check out sahumane.org for all the information. I like the cat costumes. I yeah. think there should be more cats in costumes. Mm. Makes good content. It's going to be your platform. <laughs> Time now, 907, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead, David Elder shows us his top five Ooh. scariest moments during his haunted restaurant tour. We got everything there. Coming up, we'll introduce you to a brass band that is bringing a whole new sound to San Antonio. Two, three, four. <laughs> well done. I like that. Jamming out, Sarah Spivey over here, you tap dancing. The, you got the beat. Two, yeah. Two, three. Oh. There you go. Oh, oh, this Sarah Spivey bringing music, uh, music, bringing dance moves, and bringing the weather. We're going to check in with her in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. A local band with New Orleans style. The group Bear Brass, spelled like Bear County. All about sharing the love of the music with everyone around them. Well, bringing great vibes. Really good music, too. RJ Marquez introduces us to the guys playing smooth tunes in the Alamo City. When you think about the music scene in San Antonio, a brass band might not be the first thing that you think of, but the members of Bayer Brass are bringing a whole new style and sound to the Alamo City. We sat down with the band to learn more about their origins and how they thrive during the pandemic. And there's a lot of really good musicians here, so it's like, how can we get a lot of people together and create something special. That was our goal, was to give something back to the community, make it street style, make, have everyone participate, everyone be involved. So a, a lot of our, our playing really relies on the crowd. One of our goals is always to find what music are people listening to nowadays and how can we incorporate that with the New Orleans style. We try to we try to point the music to everybody, you know, just like we, we play a Billie Eilish tune and a bunch of kids will recognize that. We were used to playing every almost every weekend at that point and then to all of a sudden everything gets shut down and it's like, now what? We saw it not as, um, oh no, we can't play anymore, but we saw it as an opportunity to kind of fine tune things, tighten things up. It is easier for us to kind of spread out and social distance as we perform. Really impressive. That is keep it going. Yeah. They got to have some literal chops there to do that. that. Jam, That's pretty too. impressive. And that was, uh, I think, bad guy. Yeah. Billie Eilish is bad guy. Yeah, that was cute. cool. That was cool. I loved that. That was awesome. You know what? Anything to get us in a better mood because this weather is not felt like fall at all this weekend. A total 180 from last weekend's forecast where we were looking at mornings in the 40s and afternoons in the 70s. Not the case today. Today we're going to be really close to the mid to upper 80s and there are some showers out to the east, mainly east of the KSAT 12 viewing area, but in Lavaca County right now uh, we are seeing some light rain showers there, some showers pushing into Goliad uh, in Victoria County as well. Outside right now the story has been some fog this morning. It is starting to lift and we're actually seeing peaks of sunshine out there. 73 degrees south winds at about 10 miles per hour. Visibility has improved officially at the airport, but there are pockets of uh, more dense fog, especially south of San Antonio and uh, to the west right now. Look at the satellite picture. You can see that it's fairly cloudy. There are a few peaks of sunshine, a little bit clearer off to the east, but generally a warm, muggy and gray start to the day. 73 in Pleasanton, 71 in Del Rio, 69 in Kerrville, 64 in Rock Springs, 73 in New Braunfels and 73 here in San Antonio. And, and as I mentioned, the 
visibility is improving. We're back to perfect 10 mile visibility here in San Antonio, but you should still see some haze on the horizon and down in Pleasanton. Uh, visibility is less than a quarter of a mile in Beeville as well down to three quarters of a mile in Carrizo Springs. So during the day today, we are going to see clearing skies. It'll be a little sunnier in the afternoon for us, but that means that temperatures are going to be hotter. A chance for some rain east toward Houston and then in the afternoon there could be one or two stray showers, but really the biggest weather story today will be the warmth and the humidity. It'll be 91 for the high in Del Rio, 91 in Carrizo Springs and 91 in Catula around San Antonio, more like the mid to upper uh, 80s as possible, 84 in Kerrville and 82 in Rock Springs. So looking at our forecast for the day today, still fairly cloudy at 10 right around noon. That's when we're going to see those clouds break up. It'll actually be mostly sunny in the afternoon with only a 10% chance for a stray shower high right around 86. It's going to be breezy at times too. South Southeast winds gusting up to about 20 miles per hour and the sun will set at 655, leaving us with a mild and muggy evening. We need to shake up the weather pattern a little bit. And it is going to shake up partially because of Hurricane Rick, which is currently over the Pacific, expected to make landfall as a hurricane and even strengthen into potentially category three hurricane, making landfall sometime on Monday. Now, Rick is going to fall apart across the mountains of Mexico, but it is going to maintain tropical depression strength out there. It could fling some moisture our way, uh, Pacific moisture our way, and that would combine with a cold front to give us a chance for rain. But until then, we're going to have a little teaser cold front. It's going to be moving through North Texas on Monday and it's actually going to do the opposite. It's not going to move through San Antonio. It's going to compress the air closer to South Central Texas and actually make it hotter outside so that by Monday we'll be flirting with a record breaking heat. The record for the day on Monday is 91. We'll be at 90 degrees. That's the forecast high. So close to record breaking heat, but a real deal cold front is going to move through with that Pacific moisture Tuesday night into Wednesday and this is going to make it feel a lot more like fall. We'll have cool mornings and dry conditions uh, for uh, this time next weekend. So a bit of a weather change. We just got to get through these muggy days today, tomorrow, Monday, and that front will move through Tuesday night, bringing a 30% chance for storms, clearing things out, making it windy, making it feel a lot more like fall. We'll have mornings back in the 40s by Friday morning with comfortable afternoons. Thank you, Sarah. There's Pivey, 917, 73 degrees out. Well, young boy steals Pope Francis's weekly audience. Aww. Still ahead, how he got past security and what the Pope had to say. And some text officers going above and beyond for a kid. Oh. oh my goodness. Details on where and how the furry friend was rescued. All right, it has been a busy morning so far, so we want to take the time to share some good news happening around the world. Love good news. First is a woman dubbed the Fenway Hat Lady, and along with her homemade poncho, earrings, necklace, shoes, and hat, Lynn Smith now has a one-of-the-kind Boston Red Sox tree stump. Okay. She says a storm took down her tree this spring, so a friend told Aww. her to call Chainsaw Sue. Okay. There's a lot of characters <laughs> yeah, in the story. I love this. The town wouldn't let Lynn and her husband Gary cut the stump below seven feet, so she had it carved and painted into a Red Sox gnome. Of course she did. Something Lynn hopes will help her favorite team win. I mean, I'm an Astros. Surprise. Fan. Uh, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> We're in it for Astros colors today, so I got to represent a little bit. All right. White House already singing old Christmas tree. Staffers walk through. Peak Farms near Jefferson, North Carolina this week, picking out what will be the official White House Christmas tree. Third time, Rusty Etz has been chosen as the National Christmas Tree Grower. Congratulations. He calls it a huge honor. Now, the fur will be cut down the week before Thanksgiving. So you still got some time? And four officers in Fort Worth come to the rescue of a terrified kitten that was stranded on the Aww. side of a Texas highway. The white and brown cat could be seen trying to back away from officers into a sewer grate. The department says the kitty is now safe the hands at a local animal shelter. That is adorable. So, All right. You want to say something? No, it's just, oh, just okay. really cute. Oh, yeah. All right, next up, here we go. A young boy stealing the show at Pope Francis' mm. weekly audience. The kid jumped on stage, walked right past security, said hello to the Pope, asked for his cap. The head of protocol even lent the boy his chair. Oh, the fan got a round of applause from the crowd and a smile from the pontiff. Now, 
Pope Francis said the boy had a medical limitation, but praised his spontaneity, saying what he did came from the heart. I'm sure it did. So precious. Aww. I love those precious moments. Oh, yeah. Always some good time for good stories. Time now, 922, 73 degrees out. It's Oof. Texas Eat. Oof. I mean, come on. We got steak. We have chicken and waffles. We got burgers. And spooky stuff, too. There we go. We'll be right back. during our haunted restaurant tours was at Moonshine in Austin. I mean, is there a particular hot spot in the restaurant that people really notice, like spirits and activity? Oh, absolutely. I think one of them is where we're standing right now. <laughs> <laughs> was that a guy? <laughs> we know. Oh, that was somebody else. One day we were closing down the restaurant. This was locked. Nobody had been here for a couple of hours. I noticed a, a circle of chairs at the center of this room. Like right, where I'm we're like, right where we're standing. Now, this will be a spirits bar where you can actually drink with spirits while you're down here. I love what's going on. On, right? Ooh. And we need to hightail it out of here because I don't want anybody tapping on my shoulder. Down. Now, we're getting a taste of the top items on the menu. Right in front of us now, we have all the delicious food coming out of the kitchen. These are like the top items on the menu. And right here, you got a burger that's just loaded. I mean, is that like pimento cheese that's in there? Oh yeah, that's a uh, secret pimento cheese that we make. Um, a big old burger patty, eight ounce burger patty. <laughs> I like the circle of chairs. Yeah. It's like ghosts need to have meetings too. See, it's funny because ghost meet you're up. all about the ghost meetup. Uh, <laughs> you're all about the hauntedness. I'm over here like that cheeseburger looks so amazing. Well, pimento cheese on a burger cannot be bad. Never had it before. Sounds mm. pretty good to me. David Elder gonna be joining us later in the show. Time now, 927, 73 degrees out. Well, connecting communities while bringing people back to nature. Just ahead, a look at community gardens across San Antonio that needed much, that needed much rent. That needed renovation. There you go. <laughs> All right, plus Democrats could be close to a deal on two key spending bills for the Biden administration. We have the latest details next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 931 this Saturday, October 23rd. We're just about a week removed from Halloween Woo! weekend. I'm so excited for Halloween. Mm -hmm. What are the plans? Um, I think I'm going to go over to my former neighbor's house, neighbor John. Neighbor John. Uh, he lives in a fun neighborhood that we're trick or treaters. There's a lot of trick or treaters. Okay. Hand out candy there. I I love handing out candy. I didn't. I only got like two or three trick or treaters last year. Did you already good. decorate? You good to go? Oh, I'm good to go. I, my house is decorated. But Sarah, hopefully next weekend will actually feel a little more like Halloween weather. It will actually next weekend feel a little bit more like Halloween, especially after the sun sets. Uh, it'll get nice and crisp for Halloween. Uh, but this weekend it's going to feel anything <laughs> like fall. It's going to be very warm. We did just get the pollen count in, though. There is some good news there. A tame pollen count. Molds are low at 260. Ragweed is low at 20. We're seeing improvement here with the visibility, but there's still haze on the horizon from morning fog. Visibility still down to a quarter of a mile, though, in Pleasanton. So outside of the city center there, you'll probably see a little bit more fog uh, than around the metro area. It's in the 70s outside right now. Very warm and muggy, but you still may want to head to some local corn mazes or uh, pumpkin patches and just know that even though it's not going to feel like fall, the weather should be OK. Only a 10 percent chance for a stray shower today or tomorrow and afternoon temperatures should be in the mid to upper 80s. So anything but amazing weather, it's just going to be a little warm and muggy out there. But we will have that cold front that'll cool us down just in time for the Halloween weekend. I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, firefighters investigating, working to figure out what exactly caused a home on the southwest side to catch on fire. So take a look. This is what we know right now. It happened around 930 last night on Candalia Avenue. That's between Southwest Military and Somerset Road. Firefighters on the scene tell us when they arrived, there were flames coming out of the left side of the building. They actually had a tough time putting out the flames because the roof because the home had two different roofs. Now, firefighters did manage to stop the fire from spreading to the other half of the house. Luckily, no one was home at the time. No injuries reported, but the investigation into what actually sparked it still ongoing. 
In your morning headlines, U.S. Supreme Court is allowing the restrictive abortion ban in Texas to remain in effect as legal challenges play out. The issue will eventually be heard by the high court on November 1st. The ban outlaws abortions past six weeks of pregnancy in Texas. When the Supreme Court hears oral arguments, the justices will focus on the unusual construction of the law. Texas officials aren't allowed to enforce it. Instead, private citizens from any state can bring a civil Analysis did highlight that once Facebook saw the insurrection, it then tried to prevent the growth of both Stop the Steal and Patriot Party on its platform. Well, now to Washington. Signs that Democrats could be close to a deal on two different key spending bills for the Biden administration. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks is on the North Lawn with the details. The White House is coming to terms with the reality that in order to get all 50 Senate Democrats on board, the president's social spending package will just be much smaller than he originally hoped. But the team here at the White House is still optimistic that they are close. The president this week outlined a number of major concessions he's looking at. For example, he campaigned on the idea of making two years of community college tuition free for all Americans. That proposal will likely not end up in the final bill because the president says West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin was against it. During a CNN town hall this week, the president reminded Americans that in a 50-50 Senate, every senator is king. Uh, we know another big point of contention is still how to pay for these proposals. Uh, the president had wanted to raise the overall corporate tax rate, but a different Democrat, Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona there, she's been against that. The White House and congressional leaders are now negotiating other possible changes to the tax code, like perhaps a minimum corporate corporate tax rate. The White House says the president still wants the whole plan to be completely paid for. And the White House is also arguing that even a more trimmed down version of this package would still be transformational for Americans with major investments in child care, setting up universal pre-K, and for the first time, providing paid family and medical leave for Americans. Speaker Pelosi yesterday said that they, she thinks that Democrats are 90 percent there. All right, that was Mary Alice Parks reporting from the White House Lawn. The 6th Annual Wellness for Warriors Expo happening today. Its main goal, raise money for veterans with disabilities and provide them with the resources they need. Our Jonathan Cotto is there with everything you need to know to help. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. I'm here hanging out with Shaughnessy, the founder and president of Wellness for Warriors. And Shaughnessy, the, the event is kicking off. A lot of the vendors are, are already set up and ready for the community to arrive. I even see K9 for Warriors here in the back. Um, tell me a little bit, how excited are you about launching up here just uh, in about 30 minutes? Oh, super excited. Come on, Military City USA, come out and support our veterans. We have all kind of vendors out here for the public and our veterans. Uh, it's general wellness. And guess what? You have a chance to win a $300 HEB gift card just by coming out and visiting our vendors. Wow. Where do I sign up for that? <laughs> just come out here and get your vendor card and you're good to go. Visit the vendors and you have a great chance to win that $300 gift card. We really, really are asking for your support for our veterans. Please come out, enjoy the day. Bumblebee Transformer at 1030. Elvis Presley free show at noon. It's going to be so much fun. It is, Shaughnessy. Now, for those folks who won't be able to make it for whatever reason, they still have an opportunity to, to contribute. Isn't that right? 
Yes, yes, please, please help us out. You can go to um, our website, www.wellnessforwarriors.org. It's with the number four in the middle. Any kind of donation will help. It costs Wellness for Warriors about three to 4000 to help each veteran. We truly need funds. We have 27 waiting on the list. American Legion also does great things for the community. They help the veterans within the community. Uh, please support us all and bring your kids and have a great time. That's right. Well, folks, Max, Sarah, and viewers out there, if you don't have any plans for your Saturday morning, you can head on over to Converse American Legion Post 593 and support this wonderful cause, providing resources and funds necessary for our military men and women. Back to you, Max and Sarah. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. Time now, 938, 73 degrees out. Well, still ahead, could Facebook be on the verge of changing its name? What a new report is saying about the company's future. And Ted, this was your story. Take it away. Oh, I love this story so much. So it is, what do you get when you mix a popular Texas distillery mm -hmm. with fresh produce from Community Gardens, Max? Sounds like a perfect mixed drink. Well, <laughs> it's also a good tease. I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, taking a live look out at the Elmo City. 73 degrees out there right now. We had fog to start the morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Ten community gardens across San Antonio are receiving much needed renovations and it's all thanks to a local nonprofit and a popular Texas distillery. This was a fun story. I spoke with the nonprofit Green Spaces Alliance of South Texas and Tito's Vodka about how these projects are not just connecting communities but bringing people back to nature. What do you get if you mix Tito's vodka with fresh community garden produce? Probably a fun mixed drink. But when Tito's philanthropic arm Love Tito's started a community garden of their own, they ended up with a passion project that now reaches 28 cities, including San Antonio. We saw the success of the farm that we built by our distillery and it's increasing access to fresh and healthy foods for our employees. And we're like, how can we bring this to other communities? How can we help serve other communities? So in 2019, we started our Love Tito's Block to Block program. And this year, Love Tito's partnered with local nonprofit Green Spaces Alliance of South Texas to renovate and help out 10 community gardens across our city. Having that partnership with Tito's crop up and having that relationship develop to this point where we can go out into the community and do so much tangible good for our neighbors is just so exciting. Projects from new garden boxes to irrigation systems and lots of volunteer manpower. For example, here at Cielo Community Garden, over seven new garden spaces were put in. It may not look like a lot, but it actually was a lot of work that took several weeks of time, over 60 volunteers and a lot of soil. Cielo Community Garden was made for refugees who have resettled in San Antonio to help them provide food for families and stay connected to the land. The people who have been resettled here in San Antonio as refugees, typically they're the ones who have been attached to the land from their home for generations. CEO of Green Spaces Alliance says these projects are crucial, not just for building up our community gardens, but providing a sense of community. It's a connection to the land. It's getting people back in touch with natural processes, the, the environment. The environment, which he says is so important to bring awareness to, to remind people our food doesn't come from stores, but the land and lots of hard work. The resources we have, we have to take care of and we have to be as careful as we can to use them efficiently. So I really enjoyed the story, one, because not just I'm a gardener, um, I've been part of a community garden before, and their point that it really does bring communities together was one way when I first moved to San Antonio, got to know my neighbors, but it also uh, start, started a passion that I have now gardening, mm -hmm. because it makes you realize the time and amount um, of care that it takes to grow our food they made a great point. Our food doesn't come from H-E-B, even though H-E-B does a great job. Mm -hmm. um, it's grown by farmers in Texas, across, you know, across the end of the country and the world, and they just really uh, nailed it in that we gotta take care of our environment because we need the food, and it takes a lot of work. So they're doing great things. Uh, Green Spaces Alliance, a nonprofit, and working with Tito's to renovate those 10 community gardens. You know, you could have taken what you grow and the Tito's and brought us some morning margaritas. Well, that's why we have David Elder here. That is, he just <laughs> walked into the room too. 
I think he has like a whole pyramid of burgers. He does. <laughs> and my stomach is growling. Looking forward to that, definitely. But the weather this weekend, guys, is not really going to feel like fall. It's just going to be muggy and warm. There are some showers across the coastal communities near Victoria, Port Lavaca, El Campo, those, those areas. Uh, and east of San Antonio today, a small chance, 10% for a stray shower. But generally, we'll be able to see these morning clouds give way to afternoon sun. It's going to get hot today, warm hot according to October standards, right? 86 degrees for the high temperature today for us. We'll already be at 80 by noon. We are going to have a bit of a breeze today. Southeast winds 5 to 15 gusting up to 20 and then the sun will set at 7, 655, but it is still going to be a warm evening. We'll be in the 70s all evening long, so a mild evening after a warm and muggy day. Now outside this morning, you can see the humidity there on the horizon still hazy in many places, and we still do have some areas of fog, although visibility is improving. Uh, if visibility was practically at zero in Pleasanton just about 30 minutes ago. Now we're seeing visibility of about four miles. Perfect visibility, by the way, 10 miles. So we're seeing that improve around San Antonio. Visibility down to a mile in Castroville along 90. And you can see that there are some of those low clouds out there this morning. Peaks of sunshine east of San Antonio towards Seguin, Floresville, and Gonzales, but locked into the cloud cover up in Kerrville and in Bandera. A wider view here, a bit more sun out toward the west, but still in Del Rio, fairly cloudy, 71 degrees, 73 in Catula, 73 in New Braunfels. You know, our average morning low this time of year is about 58, and we're running a lot warmer than that by about 10 to 15 degrees, and all thanks to the humidity outside right now. It's already near 80 degrees in Houston, and it's mild across all of Texas. You can see very clearly uh, the demarcar demarcation between the cold air and the warm Warm air. There is a cold front across parts of uh, the panhandle of Texas, but this is going to tease us. It's not really going to move through. In fact, it's going to have the opposite effect as it approaches on Monday. It's going to compress the air around south central Texas and make us hotter. In fact, we'll be near 90 degrees on Monday, which is close to the record of 91. But don't worry, there will be an actual cold front that moves through Tuesday night into Wednesday, and that's going to be an interesting setup because by that time, Tropical Depression Rick will be um, falling apart across the mountains of Mexico. It will sling some moisture our way, and so by Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, when that front moves through, we could have that mix in with the moisture and bring a 30%, 40% chance for scattered showers and storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. Then that front will move through and it'll actually feel more like fall by this upcoming Halloween weekend. Low temperatures will drop to uh, the 40s by Friday morning. Uh, but uh, until then, it's really just going to be a muggy and warm forecast. Again, we'll be close to those record breaking temperatures on Monday and that front couldn't come anytime sooner. We're really excited about it feeling more like fall. Uh, uh, you know, we've got the uh, Day of the Dead River Parade on Friday, and by then it should be nice and cool, even perhaps chilly in the evening hours. Sarah and Max. Ah, live in for that next weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 949, 73 degrees out. Well, coming up next, details on a new report that says that Facebook may be changing its name next week. What? We'll tell you why. This week, South Korea failed to put a dummy satellite into orbit. That's after the first launch of its domestically developed three-stage rocket. However, South Korea's president says the rocket still completed all of its flight sequences and reached an altitude of about 400 miles above Earth. It was a historic step for the country to become a prominent player in the space industry. All right, well, this week, a big week for earnings. We're talking about Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. And this comes after last week, Tesla reported record earnings despite all of the supply chain backups that we talk about. So Tesla, the electric car company, says it's operating earnings up 30%. Now they sit at $2.1 billion. Get this, it's the sixth quarter in a row that Tesla has actually posted record earnings, record after record. So this comes as the auto industry continues to deal with a shortage in computer chips and a shortage in other key raw materials. All right, a new report says Facebook is planning to change its name. The social media company says it plans to announce the new name next week. The report says the company wants to be known for more than social media. Facebook also owns Instagram and WhatsApp. 
the move would position all three platforms under one brand. Did you watch the social network? Oh yeah, movie? great movie. Remember when it was the Facebook? Yeah, he's like, I, uh, drop the V. <laughs> what if they're going back to the Facebook? Oh. Or maybe it's the social media. I don't like it. Too much? Time now, just about 954, 74 degrees out. So here's a scary fact. Halloween is the deadliest day of the year for kids under 18. Tomorrow on GMSA, how tips on how to keep your children safe. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police are searching for the person responsible for shooting two people in Astoria Drive. Police say the homeowners had a few people over and an argument began. That's when someone pulled out a gun and shot a man and woman in the leg, allegedly. They were taken to the hospital. They are expected to be okay. The shooter took off before officers arrived. The homeowners were questioned by detectives. In the pollen count, molds are low as well as ragweed, so the pollen count looks good today. That is some good news there because we need a little good news because it's not going to feel like fall. In fact, it'll be warm and muggy today, 86 for the high temperature, 10 percent chance for a stray shower, gusty winds of up to 20 miles per hour possible. Thankfully, a strong cold front will arrive on Tuesday night to Wednesday. That'll drop our morning lows into the 40s and allow for our afternoons to be comfortable for Halloween weekend. All right, so what is this week three in a row where we have a special guest? This is really exciting. This is, you know, it's the best kind of day. We love to, we love GMSA Saturdays here, but it makes it even better when David Elder joins us. Whoop, whoop, David Elder in the I, house. I'm just going to walk away. I could just be quiet. Just keep talking. Build it up a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> so the man, the myth, the legend, there bringing the best food. Yes, burgers. Mark's outing. This is the burgers right here are so iconic, especially for a business here on the east side of San Antonio. Mm. I mean, they have just brought delicious food to the area, and they actually have a competition going on tonight that you can go and support. It's at seven o'clock, and the winner wins a thousand dollars. Now the competitors Ooh. are already selected, but okay. you can go give some love. What is the competition? Uh, it's how many burgers can you eat? Okay. Just hey. <laughs> and that's Whoa! <laughs> Sarah's already winning. No, um, mm. and you can see the big burger right there in the mm. middle is actually their classic two-pound burger. Okay. Okay. This is what they're known for. The ones on, you knocked this out, right? I did. And the ones on the outside are the burgers that they're yeah, doing for the competition. Yeah, yeah. So you can see, this like, one. that's a big one. It's oh, a big yeah. one. Yeah, it's a big one. And then the ones on the outside are the competitive burgers. Okay. Right, so it's more of a, a size comparison. How much time do you get for each burger? Or for, like, the full competition? I think it's 10 minutes. Okay, how many do you think you could get in 10 minutes? <sighs> I know. <laughs> but, uh, I'm like stretching. <laughs> um, I, I think I could probably put down 10 in 10 minutes. 10? Jeez. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Fair. The bread is this really This is really good. I know this is like the competition burger, the one yeah. that you're going to eat. I could probably eat three of these in 10 minutes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. See? Sarah Costa, how many can you knock down? I don't know. <laughs> you I'm already got one. It hasn't even been eight minutes. I'm halfway through one right now. Right, I'm saying I'm like at least three times bigger than like y'all. So like that way, <laughs> three times three, nine. I mean, add one more just for fun. Ten burgers. Right now, I'm putting it down. <laughs> I think we got about 30 seconds left. Yes. So what else should we expect on the show? Oh, today, you guys have to watch for your chance to win $200 to Ooh. get this SAC food. Now, you can go there. You buy a lot of crap for $200. Yes. Now, three winners will be selected. You have to get the secret word during the show, write it down, go online, ksat.com slash Texas Eats, and you have to enter the secret word for your chance to win. All right, All right David, thank you I'm so much for coming in and bringing us food. Mark's hey. outing. Yes, Elder I'm super Eats excited. Elder starts you guys. right after this.